students who go through our core really do have something special that very few students get in the 21st century. Historically, university education, it's not about getting a set of skills to get a job. It's not about vocational training, whether it be medicine or law or business. It's about disciplining the intellect, educating and cultivating the mind. Most universities still recognize this and they'll have general education requirements where you have to take your communications course, your history course, your, your writing course and things like that. And it's good that they've got those, but the problem with the general education is it's not enough and it's also really, really scattered. So what do you learn from one history course? You learn a few facts and then you forget the facts once you're done. Add to the problem, you take the courses all out of order. So you take one course your freshman year, one course your sophomore year, and the body of knowledge isn't organized in any way, so it's hard to retain. The other problem is, because it's scattered, you almost never recognize any of the people in your class. I went through three years of education at a giant public university before I started seeing the same people in my classes. So I never had conversations outside of class with my peers. Contrast that to what Christendom has, where you've got an ordered education for the first two years. Everyone's taking the same classes, everyone's learning to speak the same common language, and you're getting a unified, orderly body of knowledge that the whole community shares and that builds up the intellectual life of the community. To have a disciplined mind, you have to know how to think, but you also have to have the right content of thought. You've got to have material to work with. And Christendom does a great job of blending both the content, the what to think about, with how to think. So just to look at the history and the literature course. In history and literature, we have a four semester sequence where we proceed together through the core. We start in ancient Greece, and we move together through Western civilization to the 20th century, where the history teaches what happened, the literature teaches sort of the development of art and the development of culture and of the Western mind. And students who go through this, not only do they learn who they are and where they've come from historically, right? But they also get freed from just the tyranny of the present. So they, they learn how past ages saw the world and they become able to step back and evaluate the present in a way that otherwise they wouldn't be able to. While the historical and literary education is going on, though you've also got the theology education and the philosophical education, where they're being taught how to think clearly, how to think rationally, how to proceed properly in their thought, while at the same time learning how to think in accord with the perennial philosophy of Aristotle and St. Thomas, and in accord with the teachings of the Catholic Church. You add to it political science, which is the practical application of the philosophy and of the theology, and then at the end of this, you've got these students who know where they've come from, they know how their world has developed, and also they know how this fits into the thinking tradition of the church. And that's a really, really powerful thing. Finally, you add to that the fact that the whole education is done under the final ends mandated by theology. And because theology is the queen of the sciences and because theology governs everything, all the disciplines find their unity and their harmony in that. There are lots of places that have all major and almost no core. And you come away with students who might know English or history or philosophy quite well, but they're not able to contextualize it in the big picture. You have a lot of places, or a few places, that have all core curriculum and no majors. And so you get this very, very broad knowledge, this very big picture, but you don't learn the scientific study of any one discipline. Christendom does a great job in giving both the big picture, and then once the students have a basic foundation to build on, training them up to become excellent in one discipline, and giving them this strong body of knowledge that they can go on to apply then in whatever field they choose, which is the perfect foundation on which to build further education with our majors, and then ultimately career and apostolic life outside of the college. All I have to do is point to the wide number of our students who've gone on to be so highly successful in graduate study in whatever field in the top universities in America and abroad. Our students come away from the core not having small skills, right, small skills, learning how to work this spreadsheet or this program or, or whatever, but they come away knowing how to think. They come away with disciplined habits of mind. They know how to read. They know how to read carefully with an eye for detail and to get the author's message from what they read. They know how to write, to express themselves clearly and to write persuasively. They also have the ability to think logically, to think clearly and to proceed by clear and distinct, precise steps, and not just whatever their emotions happen to tell them. And finally, because they've been taught through this very ordered core, they have the ability to, to see things in the big picture, to find each thing's place in the big picture, and to understand things as a synthetic whole rather than just atomized parts. And these are the sorts of skills that, even though they're harder to test for, right, these are the things that lead to students being highly professional in whatever field that they go into after graduation 
And again, ultimately the proof's in the pudding, right? You look in law or you look in business or you look in medicine and you see what our graduates are doing there and that's a powerful argument for what their education has done.